Let's talk about how to search for Photoshop tutorials on different effects on YouTube. One thing I ran into a lot when I was just starting to learn Photoshop was seeing a cool effect but not knowing what that effect is called and not really knowing how to search for a tutorial on that specific effect. In this video, we're gonna go through what these different effects are called, what you can search in YouTube to find tutorials on these specific effects. So first up we have photo manipulation. This is any graphic that has a subject sort of blended into the background where you have to mess with color and lighting. Things you can search are blending subject into background, match color and lighting to background. This is all kind of under the umbrella of photo manipulation. These three graphics are mine. These are the only ones that are mine in this whole slideshow, if you will. The rest I just pulled from Pinterest. I just searched sports graphics and found different examples of things that I can pull. You can really get into shadows and highlights, which brings us to our next effect, which is just subject lighting. You'll notice in sports designs, there's often a light source. You'll see the light hitting specific parts of the players in those designs. That is definitely a, a skill that you need to learn and practice. Some other things you might search, realistic lighting on subject, make highlights and shadows on subject, or a player in the context of sports design. So you can see just a couple images here with good lighting. Next we have player retouching. This is anytime you see a player that just has incredible detail and like super sharp, very defined shadows and highlights. That is all kind of under this umbrella of photo retouching, it's called. And it's really just going in and being very intentional about increasing the bright spots in a design, decreasing the shadows. You can also look into HDR toning, which in Photoshop, if you go up to image adjustments, HDR toning, that is gonna open up like a whole world of, of ways to sharpen and add detail to images. Next we have the halftone pattern. Had never heard of this before, but this is the dot pattern you might see on different graphics going over players. You can see it's not just one flat image of dots. The size of the dots adjust as you go through the kind of brightness or darkness of them as you look at them in the shadows or highlights of an image. So that is the halftone pattern, halftone effect. Next we have the pixel stretch. You might see this from time to time. It's not super common in sports graphics, but anytime you see this, this wave or a circle, or sometimes it's it's just extended out or flipped in a certain direction. That is taking specific pixels from an image and warping them, essentially. That's called a pixel stretch. Next, we have the cutout or sticker effect. This is when you see that white stroke around a subject and it kind of gives the effect that it was cut out of a piece of paper. There are different ways to do this effect. You might see a shadow behind it. You might see no shadow. You might see like a very rough cutout or it might be more tight to the subject. Next we have flares and lens flares. That's this little flash of light you might see in different designs. It's a little more subtle in this Kobe design. It's kind of highlighting just the edges there. So lens flares are something you can render directly in Photoshop. Going up to filter, render, lens flare and you can go through and, and find them that way. You can also find images of flares. You might want a specifically like a big orange flare. You might find something like that online. Next we have the neon effect. Neon is pretty self-explanatory, but you never know. You'll see these glowing logos or glowing letters in different type, different designs. And usually that glow will reflect back on the subject too. So you're gonna have to go back to player lighting tutorials to really get that full effect. Then you have 3D text. This is obviously text that pops out more than just bevel and emboss, which is a tool within Photoshop, bevel and emboss there. The, the really 3D like pop out text is a little bit more involved. Extrude text is another term for it where it's really coming out at you, so that's 3D text. Then we have textures, grain, and overlays. You will see a variety of textures in a lot of different sports designs. Grunge textures are very common. That's kind of this like gritty, rough texture that a lot of designs have. That is all something you can do with basically taking an image, bringing it into Photoshop, and then changing the blend mode of that image and maybe fine tuning some of the contrast and other settings of that particular file. The dust scratch texture is another thing that you'll see in a lot of sports images, which is kind of like this, these white speckles that you'll see on designs. 
Also, grain is something you'll see on almost every design, I would say. Grain just does a good job of being kind of your final layer that brings everything together a little bit more. That's kind of the idea with most textures is it's an overlay for the entire design, so everything looks a little bit more cohesive. But I would definitely recommend learning how to use textures and then using them in pretty much all your designs. You should have some kind of texture, at the very least grain, so it doesn't just look totally flat. Brush fonts. These are these kind of script, you know, brushy fonts that you might see. The, the to the and then the underline for orange. You can also use these fonts to create other shapes. Like this arrow might consist of the letter L that you just stretch out and then whatever gets an arrowhead shape, whatever letter there is there. This could be an O that the designer turned into a circle. So be aware of like how to use those brush fonts to create shapes and add like little callouts to your design as well. Next we have illustration. Illustration is really its own beast. There's no quick tutorial to figure it out. There are ways you can put a bunch of filters on and make an image look kind of cartoony or comic booky, but really like the good illustrations are just gonna be hand-drawn and they might be hand-drawn over a, an original player image. And when I say hand-drawn, that might just mean in Illustrator, digitally hand-drawn, but it is a, a pretty long and involved process. But there are ways you can get similar illustrated effects in Photoshop. So cartoon effect, sketch effect, comic book effect, you might be able to find some filters that give you something similar. Next, we have the outline text effect. That's when you have some text behind a player or subject and then you want the stroke going over. So it's basically creating two text layers. The front text layer has that stroke to it. The back text layer does not. So you see that in a good amount of designs where it, it just makes the text a little bit more legible. Maybe you like the style of the text being behind, but you still don't want people to not be able to read the word. Here we have the RGB split effect. This is that, that blue and red TikTok type effect. You'll see 3D glasses effect, I've seen it called. This is like splitting out certain color channels. So you might take the cyan or the red channel and then move that over in an image. So channel split is another name for this. Stretched text effect. You can see mellow, mellow, stretching out that E. You got Dwayne Wade also stretching out that E. Win now, stretching out the N. That's a pretty common effect you'll see in sports designs. It basically consists of changing text to a shape, and then you can take specific points on that shape and stretch them out. The photo shape mask, I don't really know a good term for this one, but if you type something like that into YouTube, you should be able to find tutorials. Clipping mask, insert image in shape or text, text or shape masking. That's all this concept of taking an image and putting it in text. So we have 20, 15, we have an image going through that. You can do it with a player number. Here we have LeBron 23 and he's kind of jumping through. This effect, if you want the player like popping out of it, you'd basically have one layer that is the image clipped to the text and then a second layer that's the image cut out, so just LeBron, and that would not be clipped to anything. Or depending on how you wanted to do it, you could like mask out the parts that you want within the shape and then not mask the parts that you want popping out. Next we have the text portrait effect. You'll see this occasionally, not too often, but it is out there. It's kind of when you take text and put it over a player's face. It might be like paragraphs of text. It might just be one word or name going vertically. Next we have the dispersion effect or the disintegrate effect. This is the, the Thanos effect. It's this concept of, of like a dissolving object or subject that is kind of fading away in the image. Here we have gradient maps or the multiply blend mode. See how these images are just green and black? If you take a gradient map, you can basically pick two colors and it will make the image only those two colors. So you can say the dark tones I wanna make black, the lighter tones I wanna make green, and that's how you get something like this. The multiply blend mode would give you a similar effect if you combine it with other blend modes. Next we have the splatter effect, pretty self-explanatory. looks like there's also maybe some HDR toning involved in this image. Next we have the doodle effect. These are just like brush strokes, essentially. This is someone that took a brush and maybe manually wrote out QB, maybe manually drew some arrows. Again, you might have like a brush font that you can take different parts of to create 
shapes and text and lines and stuff. Next we have perspective. This is our, our last effect we're gonna go over. Anytime you see text that someone is standing on or, or shifted text in some way, this game day graphic is cool. It's kind of got distorted text and then going down across the bottom as well. That's all in perspective warp, perspective transform. These are effects you can get to in Photoshop if you go to edit, transform, perspective, or you have perspective warp right here. And by the way, all these terms, make sure you're saying in Photoshop as well. So splatter effect Photoshop, multiply blend mode Photoshop, dispersion effect Photoshop, that should help you narrow down your search results even more. I'm probably gonna make tutorials for some of these, but in the meantime, I figured I would let you know what you can search on YouTube to find similar stuff. There are a lot of great designers that are making Photoshop tutorials and a lot of this stuff is out there already. So keep that in mind and hopefully you can start building your Photoshop effect tool belt.